Hey there, everybody. Welcome to the uh, the first Cambridge Inside Out show of the new year, 2022. 2022, that's true. Oh and I'm goodness. Robert Winters, and I've been that way ah. for decades. And I'm so. Judy Nathans. Uh, so I hear. Uh, yeah. And with a new year, and yes. after a Cambridge municipal election of last oh, year, yeah. um, the, uh, they, they, nine people raised their hand. Uh, for the city council yeah. right. and six people for the school committee and inaugurate we're all inaugurated mm -hmm. uh and uh for the new term yesterday um 10 a.m for the mayoral uh excuse me the city council inauguration okay. which took place outdoors in very cold weather in starlight square central square how come they did it there and the school committee were did it inside initially they were both supposed to happen in the southern chamber yeah. And then uh, it was actually, I think a decision was made last week, maybe when the numbers were soaring to move the city council. Uh, right. And maybe because the uh, other one is at night, it could be, they couldn't have done it outside. Yeah, yeah. So, but, um, and also I think they just, fewer um, people. they had fewer yeah. people. Yeah. Actually, there were some, at least two school committee members brought no guests to the, their wow. inauguration. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So not, not safe. anyway. Uh, but with the uh, inauguration, just the way we do things under our glorious plan E charter, uh, the uh, uh, the city council gets to elect their their president of the city council, better known as the mayor of Cambridge, okay. but it's really effectively the the uh, president of the city council, right. and um, you know so that took place. And uh, again, no surprise for those who've been watching that it, it was Sumble Siddiqui was. Um, um, re-elected or should say elected again as yeah. uh, mayor and after right. a little bit of you know funny business uh alana mallon was selected again as uh, vice, vice chair, chair of the city council why are you calling it funny business for? well no funny business only because it was yeah. a straight up it nine nothing right. it was nine nothing right. for the, mayor. uh, the mayoral election i mean there's right. a, there's a backstory behind that you know which we don't uh -huh. need to get into no but um but you know, it, but in the end, I don't think anybody wanted to be seen as voting in anything in any way other than unanimously for Sambal Siddiqui, right? Right? You know how the votes initially materialized and got to five is is kind of its own story. But in the end, uh, you know, everybody you know closed ranks, and this way nobody's going to say who's the good guys and the bad guys, and right. and it's all let's all start off the new term and right. you know happy and free, right? Okay. Um, I think it was a little bit, I mean, I personally, I don't feel that the vice mayor role is, uh, there's no extra salary, there's no extra staff, there's no extra anything. No, but there's some kind of, um, I mean, people it's, wanted it. I mean, it wasn't it's, that straightforward, right? It's, it's, a, it's nicer yeah. to put vice mayor in front of your name instead of counselor, I guess. Um, but, uh, but, you know, there's no additional authority or anything that comes with it. Um, some people believe that it's uh, it's a kind of a stepping stone, meaning if you're vice mayor, therefore right. you have the upper hand for the next mayor election. But that historically but is definitely not true. No. Yeah. So anyway, so that took place. And uh, Alana Mallon was uh, chosen again after a little bit. I think initially there were three, four three votes for. There were, there right. Were, four there votes were, there for was Nolan. No, there was one ballot for each. But, right. But the way it works is that the ballot is not closed until the gavel strikes three times. And before that happened, they, they just uh, they uh, shuffled some votes, votes around. Right. So, um, yeah, so Sambal Siddiqui gave her initial, he was honored her original pledge and gave her vote for vice mayor to Patty Knoll initially, which some people were a little confused about. But then once there were not five votes for Patty Nolan, then the, mm -hmm. the, the votes started switching and they all right. closed ranks around a lot of mount. It ended up just the five, the five votes. Uh, right. uh, but, you know, and any other votes just it didn't matter because you got to five. All you got to do is get to five, right? You don't need any right. unanimity but, for it. But a couple of other people, well, a few people wanted it. So. Yeah. I mean, I th you know, th several people have commented on it. I think Chronicle is actually doing a nice story about it as well. Oh, yeah? uh, you know, the... Um, you know, some would argue that uh, it's it's you you catch a lucky break to be mayor during a crisis because everybody will give you credit and, and thank you for yeah. it. That's a very cold hearted political way of looking at the world. The way I look at it, and I think the way a lot of reasonable people look at it, it's no fun to be mayor in the middle of a, of a no, pandemic. I, I, no. So Sumbul Siddiqui was legitimately elected before the pandemic really yeah. kicked into high gear. 
Um, it was not a fun ride. Months. Right. I think yeah. she handled herself extremely well yeah. uh, and worked cooperatively with Louis Di Pasquale and, mm -hmm. and city staff who still, you know, in spite of the fact that our numbers are high with Omicron, but they're everywhere high right now. But I think ours we, are uh, still, our percent of our positivity is still lower than most. Very places. low, yeah. No, I think, I think Cambridge by and large handled yes. the crisis as well as could be done. Yeah. Uh, you know, and you can always find some faults here and there. But, you know, honestly, we took care you of. You know, I, I go in a lot of places. I, I'm not that. And I never see anyone without a mask inside. I just don't. And I know people have said it. I think Denise Simmons has brought it up, but maybe in certain. I think she's brought it up like in public buildings or maybe in public projects or whatever. That could be true. Um, but the people here just. They're wearing masks outside. I'm doing it now because it's cold. But you know, yeah, actually, I noticed it actually is kind of okay that way. Yeah, it yeah, helps. I, what hell? It covers you know. Yeah. But no, I, I think you notice that. I mean, my, it's just people are you know, really. Uh, in the early days of this, uh, you know, a year and a half ago. Uh, yeah. I think a lot of us were just sort of living in dire fear. Yes. Some people still are living in dire fear. Well, especially because Omicron's made you, yeah. oh my God, every other person can have it. Yeah. I mean, there are still people who will like walk out into the street rather than pass out. I, I happened to me the which, other day, but yeah. Yeah, that's, true. that's a little weird. But, yeah. Um, but, you know, there was a lot of that. Remember when they were closing down oh the streets God. because you had to walk out in the street. You couldn't walk on the oh, sidewalk. And, you Please. know, people running by Please you were going to kill back. you. But, um, but that was the that was the mindset of the day. Nowadays, I think people are just really, really fatigued by it all, and they are kind of horrified bit, that we're still in a big surge. I know they've been jolted a little by this almost. Yeah, thing so people go people like even just, I. I'll say like, well, I'd rather yeah. not be wearing this mask, but in a lot of situations, I'll go, oh, let's just rather, let's yeah. just uh, you know soldier on, get through this. Stupid and now thing. it's double mask. I mean, be careful what kind of mask you yeah. wear and all this stuff. So it's like yeah. Anyway. So All I right, it so might actually be worth just mentioning here. Yeah. I'm going to see if we yeah. can. Uh, I'll, I'll probably, um, I, I'm not gonna, I'm, I'm do my best not to foul things up here, but um, I thought I would. sharing here? I am going to do a little quick okay. screen share here, oh, of the, uh, if I may. Uh, yep. So first, I just sort of, since we were just talking about the mayor. Oh, mayors. Oh, yeah. You know, one of the things that I, I put a link on, uh, on the mm -hmm. site was, uh, you know, just to kind of look at the historical yeah. Um, record of the mayors, even if you you can look all the way back to when Cambridge became a city in 1846, wow. but even during the Plan E era, 1941 uh -huh. on, you'll notice that you know because now Sambal Siddiqui is uh, going to be mayor two terms in a row. Who was the Some, first woman mayor? Was it Barbara Ackerman or Alice? Uh, Barbara Ackerman. Yeah. Back yeah. In and I even I even on the shelf right next to me, I think I have uh, Barbara Ackerman's book about being oh, a mayor. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, you know, there were historically, even from the very, very first um, uh, uh, planning uh, terms, we had a, a John Corcoran was mayor for two consecutive terms. Ed Crane holds the record probably forever when well, he was mayor three terms in a row. Mm -hmm. uh, starting in 1960, 62, and 64. But, you know, there, there have been others. Ken Reeves was back to back in the early 90s. Michael Sullivan, uh, 2002, and then 2004 again. You know, so it's happened before. Um, this is interesting. I see that Semple is the first woman to do two terms. To go back to back, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, um, that's interesting. so anyway, so that's what worth noting. By the way, for those interested in knowing who the city managers and city clerks going back to the oh, 1600s, yeah. um, I have that as well. But those are um, all men. But I, I, I thought it would be. Uh, oh yeah, and by the way, for those who are mm -hmm. curious about the um, the mayoral count and the vote switching, you know, I have that all posted up on the website. Yes. Yes. about how that initially went and uh, how the vote switching came to how they mm -hmm. it came to be five but the thing i wanted to just point out here again is uh, just how extraordinary this um this omicron presumably yeah. omicron uh yeah. period oh, the gosh. surge Look at that. It's that one day it's gone up oh my gosh yeah 364 today <sighs> is a new record a new daily record of new additions Holy yeah uh it's you know, I, you know, just since I make these graphs every day, um, how many times I've had to rescale the graph to, you know, to go from 10,000 to 11,000 to 12,000 to 13,000 on top. It seems like every week I have to add another thousand on there. It's terrible. And, um, you know, but um, 
it, but I think one of the things that I keep staring at even more so than the cumulative numbers of COVID cases um, is, um, is sort of the shape of things. Now, again, you can speculate all you want here, and I will right now. Um, right now, I mean, you can see how this Omicron phase here has dwarfed Delta. I mean, really dwarfed it, right? I mean, we had the winter surge from uh, last year, and then this Delta is was- from, This is from the beginning of it to now. The very beginning the first, that we were all living graph. in fear is actually right. quite small. Look how low that is, oh my God. Last oh year my during gosh. the winter into spring was really, we thought that was it. And then it would virtually vanished by the beginning yeah. of summer. And then came Delta and then we said, okay, Delta, that'll be that. Right. And then now we have today. And, this is really and it's spiked. You're all wow. spiked like mad. But Holy if you God. actually look though at what has happened in places like in South Africa, yeah. In other places, I even think I think in, in England right now, mm -hmm. where this particular phase really spiked, but then it really crashed it, or it is really crashing. So, uh, you know, is this going to continue to rise before crashing or well, is it going to crash? I, soon? I heard I heard something that the UK and maybe some other countries, their testing is far superior than ours is or the availability of rapid tests and that's a little scary to me because we we now are outpacing any other country in terms of our uh people yeah, a lot tested. more people are being tested now as the long lines will test so i know some of the, our big that numbers, the whole problem there's just they can't yeah. get the tests a lot of people so i mean i suspect do I, I i don't know this but the 364 new cases for today uh, may be actually part of those numbers will may include some of the numbers from the schools Right. Oh, because they're, they're testing. testing. They're there's testing be a today and tomorrow. That's true. Yeah, there's yep. a certain percentage of. Oh of, yeah, there will be cases yep. will be Definitely. will be positives, right? Definitely, so, yeah. yeah. So now, so again, mm -hmm. I, I don't want to be all Pollyanna about this, but you know, you there got is the a certain, age thing down there. Can you go show? Yeah, that? just to sort of show that yeah. it was just sort of the in the very young ranges where right. everything was spiking, but but there's also a lot more people in those groups, right? Yes. So so but if you actually look at this, about yeah. But if you look at the shape, you know, where it goes up and then it goes up yeah. and then it goes up and then you'll notice that that's actually happening pretty yeah. much all. It's just that there's fewer people in each of these age groups. Right. Well, they're so, also not doing a lot of the things that this other age group does. I mean, they're retired or they're not. Well, yeah. but, I mean, that's part but they, of fewer people. Yes. But right. But the, my point is simply that the spiking, the yeah. recent spiking is happening in the very young, the 20s, the 30s, yes. the 40s, the yeah. 50s, even the 60s and even the 70s. You can see yeah. it's just that there are fewer people yeah. testing. Slightly, but yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, so it's uh, it's the pattern you do see across all the age groups right now. Now, I will I will I will sp um, speak kind of intuitively here. Yeah. You know, and the, the way I've been saying this to people is, you know, it's like the flame that burns brightest burns out fastest, too. So there's a very it's real hope. possibility yeah. that. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, I'm I'm so grateful for the vaccinations and that it's oh, preventing and the boosters. And they said boosters really are helping against. Them. Right. And I'm fully yeah. boosted now. And yep. what it is, what it means is that, you know, even as people getting sick, they're not getting the dire effects and the vi variant no. itself seems to be a little milder. But right. what it but means it is still is a potential for. Th that's right. Know. Just because of the Afterwards. sheer numbers of positives. Right. Yeah. But, you know, if uh, there's a part of me feels that this was des this fire was destined to burn through you know, the, 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 the prairie before it was all said and done. And we're kind of in that period where it's kind of burning through the prairie. And, but once it does, you know, then I think you'll start to see the numbers diminish rather quickly. I hope so. You know, and then maybe in a month and a half from now, we may be looking back and saying, well, well they said the peak will be, uh, I've been hearing mid January, January to late January. Yes, to late January. Yeah. Now, again, that's all based on modeling, but I think a sure. lot of that modeling is pretty robust. Yeah. You know, I mean, I teach a oh. course in differential equations and yeah. my last lecture is I, I give him a little intro to um, uh -huh. some of the modeling. So, okay. um, so I, I feel pretty good that this is not going to last forever and we'll, we'll be okay uh, as we head, uh, head toward um, in toward February into March, whatever. But again, purely uh, intuitive. <laughs> I'm not going to quote numbers to sort of back that up, but I feel there's good, there's a good reason to believe that. So, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, and a lot of a lot of experts seem to believe that's the case as well. 
so anyway, so that's sort of the the good news about the bad news. Is, yeah, is that a fair, news fair way to characterize yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, one other thing that I think, uh, you know, I, knew, I know we often talk about um, things related to city council matters. And, you know, they haven't, obviously, they couldn't have, they, they last met on December 20th. 20th. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or yeah, 21st, 20. 21st, maybe. Uh -huh. oh, it was 20th, right, 20th. You wrote the 20th, uh, so I think it's Yeah, <laughs> and um, anyway, so, the, you know, and then we, you know, it was, uh, they canceled the last meeting of the term, as they almost always do. There and were then, some meetings after the 20th. Though, there were committee public meetings, public meetings. committee yeah. meetings, yeah. yeah, which is kind of, that's something of interest. But yes. uh, but now the, the new mayor, the new mayor was the same as the old mayor, We'll make committee appointments. Maybe there'll be some changes from last time, but you know, there's a good chance that it'll only be minor changes, but we'll see. Mm -hmm. I actually but hope they do don't, shuffle don't, them up. Don't some council members request certain things? They do, the, and they may not have gotten it last time, or maybe they got sick it. of, they could have gotten sick of being on a, you know, listen, yeah. if I was Sumble Siddiqui, for example, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I would make sure that Quentin Zondervan was not head of the public safety committee. <laughs> I yeah. would make that priority one because I think he's basically been using it for all the worst reasons. Hmm. Um, but again, I don't know who wants that job right now. Yeah, that's a touchy job. I mean, that's a I touchy, think it is touchy job. at this point. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, I, I kind of hope, uh, I mean, I mean, yeah. I would sign on in a heartbeat to the pledge that Heather Hoffman has been asking counselors oh, right. to sign on for civility. Uh, and, you know, I think we've been using city council during a pandemic. There's been a lot of opportunism that's been run across city council uh, to kind of create dissent and trouble and hard feelings. And maybe, well, wasn't I kind of hope we can get also that. went to neighborhood organizations too, and neighbor organizations as well. Yeah. You know, yeah. We, we've sort of gone through a bad, pretty bad patch. And honestly, yeah. I thought I really thought for sure that when the pandemic kicked in, we'd all put a lot of that stuff aside and it didn't happen, you know, but um, I don't know, maybe we were all just, you know, cooped up and, and getting frustrated or whatever. I think it's, uh, it's the national uh, climate, too. Yeah, it's, it's, but it I definitely trickles down. Yeah, I, I, I know uh, the mayor is not going to take my advice necessarily on anything, mm -hmm. but the truth is, is that is that. Um, by getting the right people in, in these positions, you can actually set a good standard uh, and then everybody's life will be better, you know. Um, yeah, but you important gotta be careful. Things. You can't be political. But everything. You know, but but people do use, city councilors do use their positions as committee chairs. Well, can you make, can you make a, a committee political. a co-chair? Can you have co-chairs for a committee? Uh, you know, they, balance they, it out. Some of them do have co-chairs and what Housing they do- Housing did, Jivan and- uh, Right, and, uh, and Denise. other, right, uh, with each council term, one of the, the only, I think they did this on Monday, I'd actually, maybe I, I think they did, which what? is they, they and after they do the election of the mayor and yeah. then the vice mayor, they do yeah. usually one order of business, which is, other than adjourning, uh, right. which is the uh, adopting the rules. And yeah, usually what that. they do is they adopt the rules of the previous council provisionally with the uh, possibility of changing it. Now, Uh, one thing, rules are not just a matter of, you know, when you can, you know, make a motion and all that stuff. It also includes the naming of the committees, the number of members on committees, oh, okay. how many people constitute a quorum, uh, whether they have co-chairs or just a single is that, chair. Is that different than the charter? That's yes. not spelled out in the charter? The is charter is actually a part of state law. And uh, state okay. law, uh, okay. but though, though it can be amended, as we did with ballot. Yeah, codes. we're amending ours. Yeah. Yeah, right. But uh, okay. but but the with committees and stuff, all that. That's that's. It's all part of council thing. rules. Yeah. Okay. So um, so I hope they make good decisions. Yeah. So that they, we have a good working city council, as opposed to a kind of an inflammatory posturing council, which we Now, have sometimes had. Did they have retreats before to go over this stuff? I seem to uh, remember that. They okay. have done that, you yeah. know, in, in some past years. Okay. Um, those are usually closed to the public. Maybe well, that's they a good should thing. Be. Yeah, yeah. I think they should be. Yeah. Um, the school committee has been known to do those things with some regularity. But you if know. you could discuss in council rules and stuff, I mean, that's not going to be done. You, you know, I think in many ways, this will be a function of the individuals. I, I mean, I have to say that... Um, I mean, my, in my opinion, Paul Toner 
uh, joining the council is a person who can is a good negotiator and, and a person who's because oriented that way organization of the school yeah i think the, and I, I call him the new kid he's probably horribly bothered yeah. by that but uh burhan azim is a very cordial fellow and yeah. i think he there's a good chance that he'll he'll so be more young. into cooperation um, than yeah. in confrontation um you know and you know we are still starting off this council term still in the thick of the pandemic I know. but you know if we can get past that then you know there's some good opportunities for, for good work from elected officials and and hopefully um, maybe they'll rediscover the capacity to find compromise. And that you know. kind of leads into the whole thing about reporting and committees. Yeah. And so, yeah. yeah, I mean, this to me, you, you know, talked I talked about, yeah. Yeah. So I would just say something a little bit about that. All right. Mm -hmm. So um, one of the real, to me, a real bad aspects <laughs> of not just the council term that just ended, but even a little bit of the one before. Oh, yeah. Uh, was, you know, because I've been keeping track of this stuff for years, mm -hmm. is that whenever city council committees would meet and they would discuss matters of substance, because it used to be said that most of the hard work would happen in committees, then uh, within a few weeks of the meeting, there would be a report made to the full city council, For you know, month, minutes yeah. of the meeting, and sometimes mm -hmm. they would be very detailed, sometimes less so. Mm -hmm. but, um, but at least there would be a report. And if there was an action item, you know, they would either they could vote on it, whether it was an ordinance committee one it had zoning related matters, they could right. pass through a second reading and maybe move it, move legislation mm -hmm. along. But for, for reasons that are a little inexplicable to me, um, starting with um, the previous council term, they actually ended the term where they, they, they were like, I think about 13 or more re committee reports that were never filed at all. So they never even reported back to the council. And I thought, what the heck is that about? Now, some of it was because the chairs were Jan Devereaux and Craig Kelly who left. But I can tell you that in years before, whenever somebody was leaving the council, if they were, uh, including Ken Reeves, when if you were chair of a committee, you made sure you cleaned up your act and got all your reports hey, you in before you left. want to see your report, yeah. Yeah. You know, and sometimes the reports of one council term won't arrive until early in the next council term, yeah. right? But this year, maybe the excuse being the Zoomy world and, and uh, you know, oh, the pandemic awesome. and whatever, there were so many meetings that you can see the videos, but no minutes, the minutes were taken, never yeah. reported to the council. It's like they've just decided we don't want to do that part of our job. You, were there... Were there more meetings than usual? I know there were a lot of not, not really which required ordinance meetings. Really? No, no I think well, like there were, were more... a lot missing middle and this and that. And yeah, that. I think there was maybe more ordinance committee meetings than usual, but the other committees, yeah, I think it was it was a it was but still, comparable. but to your point, the committee had somebody should be saying where are the minutes? Where, where yeah, ex report? exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. you know, actually I'm I think I'm gonna um you know, at the at the risk here, I'll just do it. I'll just flash it very quickly yeah, here. Yeah, we have a few minutes. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I actually just because I was wow. you know, a little, a little yeah. bored at the end of the year, and I said, well, let me go actually <laughs> see how many of these reports we yeah. never made. Okay. You know, and there were actually fifteen that were never mm -hmm. reported from the 2018 2019 council, right? Mm -hmm. Including some very substantial ones, and then the 2021 council. There's 39 now some that's of them crazy. are relatively recent meetings in right. november and december so that's completely you know excusable but summer but summer there are there are meetings going back over a year or a year and a mm -hmm. half yeah right that were just yeah. never reported at all you know yeah. and and we're talking about substantial stuff they were discussing yeah. in some of these I meetings know. You know, and it just and the list yeah. would go on and on and on. Now, yeah, I, no you know, I yeah. Now I have to say that I, you know, personally, I fault the, the committee chairs first and foremost because mm -hmm. they are the ones that sign the report and yeah, communicate it to, it to the, the council. Yeah. But you know, they will they will probably point the nasty finger to towards the city, the city clerk. clerk for right. not not making it happen and maybe there is some validity in that as well so i think they both bear some responsibility but i mean aren't they using transcription software now where they can well that's the, it, the truth is is that make it easier know, it, it yeah. should make it easier you yeah. know and uh you know you'd so you do a quick proofread you know and if you make a mistake you can always edit it later anyway well i, I have a good idea out. maybe the aid 
the personal aid that's being paid. Okay, now I'm going to. They I have should to, be doing that. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I have to say, though, <laughs> back at, they, they tried that. Oh. You know, and it sounds like a great idea, doesn't it? Well, when Nadine Mazin was on the council, yeah. he had his aide actually write up the minutes, and oh, they I were so that. horrible that they okay. were funny. They were comical. Okay, and but I, I'm a all right, because he wrote and I them lamp on their own. I lampooned right. them, and right. then they and but then. That's and, not what I'm talking about. Right, though. but our point is, is that if you you know, there's the city clerks and the, the people in the city clerk's office are the right people to do it because I understand. But somebody's got to do it. And just use subscriptions software, or you know, so that way you don't right. have to and put then, your own right. opinion and still into it. It should be yeah. people in the city clerk's office who should basically check well. it not it, it gets very political it's basically become you have your city council aid do it then they're basically trumpeting the virtues of their loyal you know their counselor but again not if they use a prescribed i agree software I agree. program that then I agree. They, they give that to the city clerk or, or the city yeah. clerk's already got it so i don't know what yeah the yeah is. yeah so the, anyway they should they should do that i think yeah. that they you, you know I, the my air. hope and again my hope yeah. and my request yeah. to the new city council is to yes. clean up the old business before you start right. on rid, the new business. And also the city manager of the office, the, the way we've got reports, that the never got, that's crazy. That's, that's crazy. right. That's right. Yeah. So, so let's just clean it up. You yeah. Know, Cause they have a along. lot of work this year. They have a lot of work. They got to find a city manager. They have to find a city clerk. They have to, you know, do all these charter changes that they're, well, they don't have to do the charge changes. So, those have those have taken place, but they do have well, to. Well, what I meant is, rules. but they have to implement them. They have to implement right. them. They have to act on them because they wanted them. So now they have to act on them. All right. right? They have to decide whether they're going to grill yeah. every city city manager yeah, pointy, I, I, or yeah, just yeah, one yeah, right. specific uh, uh, the, board. They're going to be busy. They're going to be uh, yeah, okay. presumably. Yeah. All but right. the big so one, just, the big question yeah. is still the city manager question. Absolutely. And that's still unsettled. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so either. we're going to be closing out in the next uh, few seconds and we'll see you shortly in our next segment. All right. See you then. Bye.